now let's get into the finals. Now I can end it right here. It all comes down to this. Three champions in the finals. The finals of the most anticipated tournament in recent Jeopardy history. We have two Holtzauerian players, one of whom is a 48 champion whose streak is the second highest in Jeopardy history, a second who has super champion potential and broke Jeopardy records, and the winner of the Professor's Tournament who defeated 38-day champion Matt Amodio and remains undefeated. Last year, I pointed out that Sam, JP, and Katie were all from California. This time, Sam, Ender, and Amy are specifically from Northern California. It's specifically Northern California where the finalists are from. They could potentially get together and watch their taping when it airs. Ken Jennings' Jennings instruction was, Welcome to the finals of the Tournament of Champions. This year, this will be no mere two-game total point of error, but instead, borrowing a page from our greatest of all time tournament in 2020, will be a best of seven series, in which the first player to notch three victories will be declared our winner. Oh, that's right, I forgot to talk about the format. This is a format I'm not particularly familiar with. <laughs> it's a format I personally have a lot of affection for. From a field of 21, we still have with us a baby boomer, a Gen Xer, and a millennial. Millennial? How old is Andrew? Two of our three finals have played against each other before. If not for a Miss Jeopardy clue, Andrew he could have gone on to play a seventh game. Instead, his challenger, a player named Amy Schneider, rattled off a streak of 40 in a row. No clip was shown. Instead, it zoomed in on Amy and Andrew. I wanted to add clips to help capture how significant the loss was. Our third finalist is our Professor's Tournament Champion, Sam Buttery, who has never lost a game on the Alex Trebek stage. Ken should have also mentioned he defeated 38-day champion Matt Amodio. <laughs> Speaking of which, if Sam defeated a 38-day champion, what's stopping him from defeating a 40-day champion? Anything can happen in the game of Jeopardy and frequently does. Folks, good luck to all three of our players. Let's kick off what is sure to be an exciting finals with these categories in the Jeopardy round. I think this is Ken's longest introduction in any of the games, and for good reason. Me being me, of course it'd be a lot longer, and I'd add my own commentary. This whole intro took me 14 minutes to type. Remembering the three players and just the fact that I kept track of all their games, almost 50 in total, I've seen an intense competition from all these three players, so I have no idea or prediction on who will win. I'll be satisfied no matter what. <laughs> now, let's get into the game. <laughs> the largest shark to ever live. It was an estimated 52 feet long and had a name meaning Big Tooth. It died out about a million years ago. I felt bad for Sam. He buzzed and answered, What's Megadon? Which was incorrect. The answer was, What is Megalodon? Sam missed by a syllable. Room 222 at the Strider Hotel in this Colorado city was where Louis Lemur wrote many of his Western novels. Sam answered, what is Durango? And I'm pretty sure Louis Lemur was the final Jeopardy subject in one of the Professor's Tournament quarterfinal games. Or a semifinal. And he got the first Daily Double. He made it a true Daily Double, got it right, and went to $3,600. Before he set the Major League record, he had a 61-game hitting streak in the minors. I like how it was Amy who answered the 61-game hitting streak question. Sea Life, Minnesota's biggest one of these. I love how Amy answered this too. <laughs> what is Aquarium? Since Sea Life, Sea Life, and Sea Life came up under 40th game. This geographical line runs around the globe at approximately 23 degrees, 27 minutes south latitude. Sam buzzed and answered, What's Tropic of Cancer? And immediately knew his mistake. Amy buzzed and answered, What's Tropic of Capricorn? And out of the first round winning $4,200. Sam was in second place at $4,800, and Amy was in lead at $5,000. The Compromise of 1850 admitted this western state to the Union, with slavery banned there. And your brother answered, What is... <sighs> California? <laughs> and Ken told him, Correct, home safe for all three of you. <laughs> Psi is this number, letter in the Greek alphabet. The answer was the 23rd number, the number of games Mateo won. <laughs> he got both daily doubles. And he got the first daily double on Double Jeopardy, made her a true daily double, got it right, and went to $15,600. Thou sang a summer in full throat of D's. Keats wrote in Ode to This Creature. I thought, didn't Keats come up in Matea's 17th game? He did, except he was the wrong answer. Anyway, if Andrew gets another Daily Double and makes it a true Daily Double, that'll be his second game in a row achieving something that's already hesitant in Jeopardy. Sam got the first Daily Double in Double Jeopardy for his 6000 Unfortunately, answered wrong and went down to $7,200. Ken tells him he's on the right track. The name of this prayer stool is French for Pray God. 
Amy. What's up, pre do? Nice French pronunciation. <laughs> Nobody answered the last question in Double Jeopardy. No one answered, and I knew the answer because I knew Sylvia Plath died in London at the young age of 32. Amy was in second place at 14,600. Sam was in third place at 12,000 even. And Ender was in lead at $18,800. I guess Ender's stopping Sam from defeating a 40-day champion. The final Jeopardy category was geography. Ken told him to think about what that might mean. It sounds like someone fleeing to or from a certain place. I know Sam should get this just because it's a play on geography. The question was, in July 2022, the ousted president of this country fled and went across the Indian Ocean to the Maldives. I'm trying to think of current events and I'm wondering if I can even remember any such circumstance from July. Amy answered Indonesia. She risked 10000 taking her final score to $4,600. The answer was Sri Lanka. That's correct. Sri Lanka is just a bit southeast of the tip of India. The Maldives are right to the southwest. Sam and Andrew answered correctly. Sam didn't wager anything leaving his final score at $12,000. I'm surprised he didn't since he's a professor at a naval postgraduate school. I also wonder how he'd do it against naval aviator James Fraser. <laughs> Andrew wagered 10401 and took his final score to $29,201 and now has his first win. This is a first to three, so he's the winner, just not the winner. This also means that Sam has now been defeated on the Alex Trebek stage. Let's see if he continues or if Amy or Sam will win tomorrow. And as always, thank you for watching.